What's going on guys, Philly here again today to bring you uh, something I think is a pretty cool little review. Uh, something I was kind of excited to do and um, a little bit... Uh, I like these kind of reviews because they're... Um, people are very critical of these type of things and there's really just kind of like... I've almost found that there's like no in-between. Uh, people really love or hate this item. Um, and it'll be my first one of, uh, of mechanical keyboards or at least... Um, keyboards in general. Um, but yeah, today uh, today I got in the Logitech G410, it's called the Atlas Atlas Spectrum, sorry. Um, but yeah, uh, I got it in. It's pretty much, um, I'm going to kind of go over before I show it to you guys, why it's kind of, you know, highly criticized, some things like that. Um, so basically, uh, the G410 Atlas Spectrum is a TKL, which means 10 keyless, uh, mechanical, and I put quotations around that because uh, most people think of mechanical in the sense of like uh, MX Cherry switches or even the Khalil Kali. I don't, I don't really know how you say that one, but the ones that like Razer use and a few other brands. And then there's like the Gatoron switches. Um, but yeah, most people think of uh, mechanical in those senses. This um, this keyboard actually uses a collaboration between. Um, Logitech themselves and the company Omron, and you guys might uh, recognize Omron from the people who make uh, most of the switches that go into mice. So um, pretty much all of the big mice company out there, they at least have one or two mice, if not all of them, that use Omron switches. Um, but yeah, so uh, why it's why it's kind of like highly criticized uh, is because pretty much of the of a few things. So Logitech was kind of known for a long time for being, um, I don't know if modest is the right word, but very not like gamer looking, um, super not gamery, uh, you know, not about all the flashy lights like say like Razer was, um, but more being like uniform, professional, and um, but still just being a really quality product. Um, I won't say that this isn't a quality product because I actually kind of like it, um, but it definitely gives off that more of the razor style feel and the gamery style look with like sharp edges um, things like that um, it really extended features uh, but yeah um, that's that's one of the reasons and the the really big reason especially okay so mechanical keyboard users such as myself and people that are really into mechanical keyboards love pretty much cherry MX switches um, that's kind of the industry standard and people don't really like anything but them um, some people like the Khalil switches and the Gatorons, but MX Cherry is what people go by generally because they use the MX Cherry stem, and a lot of people like to customize their keycaps, things like that. Well, I'm not going to take them off for you because I don't really want to pop these keycaps off because I really haven't even myself yet, but <clears throat> they do not use a s standard Cherry MX stem, um, so you can't customize the keycaps, you can't do anything with it. Um, and unless someone were to make some really one-off customized keycaps for it, it, which would just be rare. Um, but yeah, I'll give you guys a first kind of look at the keyboard. Um, and I, will, I would like to say before I do that, sorry about the video quality of these. I, my good webcam broke. I'm using a Logitech C525. I'm kind of looking into getting that new Razer one, the Stargazer. That one actually looks like it has some really cool features. But then again, I might just buy another C920 because it was always really good. And it's not nearly as expensive as the Razer one, which the Razer one's supposed to be like over $200. So, but yeah, without further ado, we'll kind of take a look into it, and then I'll uh, get a little bit deeper. So here it is right here. As you can see, I have it in the, oops, have it in the rainbow mode. And now I'm going to hold it up for you guys a little bit so you can maybe see it a little bit better and see some of the features that I'm talking about. Okay, so here it is right here, once again, quick overview view. Okay, so I'm going to hold it right here because this is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, so basically, you see like these edges right here, and you see how like kind of down here it extends really far, um, and kind of just overall has like some sharp edges, some things like that. Um, it basically, that, that's kind of what people weren't liking. Because people were used to the G710 and the G710 Plus where it was like super like professional looking. Um, it had white backlighting, which was even, you know, like if a, com 
if a la uh, sorry, I can't talk. If a keyboard was going to have backlighting, that was like the professional way to do it was to have white backlighting. Um, it was just all around professional. And then they came out with this, the the G910, and then this, and everybody kind of was like, "This isn't what we wanted at all." Um, type of thing. It's really super gamery. We wanted another true mechanical keyboard in the sense of Cherry MX switches. Um, and yeah, uh, they kind of did not do that. Um, so basically, but I, I won't say it's actually bad. Um, I'll get into it a little bit more. Um, so upon using this keyboard, I test everything in CSGO. Uh, it's just, that's the game I play. Um, uh, it gives me an easy basis to base things off of um, because it's a very movement heavy game. Um, same with mice, it's a very aim heavy game as well. So it, it, honestly, I think CSGO is a very good basis to base things off of, at least my findings. Um, so basically, the big difference between these switches and a lot of the other switches is to acute these switches, I believe you only have to, it's about a 1.5 millimeter press. Every other switch out there is about a 2 millimeter press, so it's a little bit shorter, something maybe similar to like the MX Strafe uh, by Corsair. But so I immediately kind of noticed that. It, it definitely didn't take a very uh, tough press at all to get it to actuate. Um, as well as, it, it kind of has, it has almost, most people said that these keys felt really bad and mushy. Um, which I kind of agree with. They're not nearly as satisfying as, uh, say, like Browns or something like that from MX Cherry. Um, even though they do kind of have, if I had to relate them to anything from Cherry, uh, I would say they're most likely a brown style feel. Um, but that being said, uh, there are some really good things that I like about this keyboard. Um, and that actually is the way that the keycaps, um, not the keycaps, but the way that the switches work. Um, basically, I think that these work really well for movement heavy games, but there's a trade-off for that. This is literally probably the worst mechanical keyboard in terms of typing that I've ever used. Um, it just feels really bad to type on. It, I don't know if it's the short travel distance or what, it just feels really awkward. I fat fingered a lot of things, I was messing up typing, and that doesn't really ever happen to me switching between even like tons of different Cherry MX keyboards. Um, that being said, it felt fine to game on. Um, it was completely fine, and some people might not even have that problem. I mean, once again, mice pretty much as long as they have a decent sensor, keyboards pretty much as long as they're decent quality. It's all about preference. Um, so I might, as where I might hate one keyboard, you might love it. So don't take that as to heart. Um, but yeah, let's get a little bit more into it. Um, another thing that I actually do really like about this is I like the backlighting. Um, I'm not a super flashy person. I don't want it like see like Corsair or even Razer. Their backlighting, especially their RGB backlighting, is super bright. It's like blindingly bright. Um, as well as my Ducky Shine 3 uh, TKL that I'll use, and I think I even had it on one of the videos one time. Um, it's like blindingly bright unless you turn it down. Uh, this, probably the best instance of single. LED per keycap um, design. Literally there is no overflow of light in this keyboard. Can't see anything at all other than what's underneath the keys. And I think that looks really great, I, especially when the lights are off. There's no overflow. Each keycap is perfectly illuminated. Um, the RGB, the colors, I think are really good, really well done. Um, and yeah, it just works. It just looks nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I will say uh, it, it is a pretty fairly expensive keyboard. It runs about 130 to $140, um, while also limiting you, like I said, on on different caps, no different switches other than the ones that are come with it. And it does have that super gamery look to it, which, like I said, I'm pretty plain, even though you see my bright blue, white, and black DX racer behind me. Um, I actually had this given to me, but I, I still actually I really like this color. But um, but yeah, people walk in my house and I'm like, what the hell is that chair? Um, but yeah, it, it I just not a huge fan of the super gamer style look, um, even though that's pretty much obviously what I do. But teaches on um, some people love that super super bright gamer look, but like I said, I don't mind it, but it, it's not my thing. Um, 
But yeah, so that's kind of the short little quick thoughts about this. I wouldn't really call it a hugely in-depth review. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you if you have the money to blow and want to you know, want you know want to try it out, you could always get it from Amazon and just send it back if you don't like it. I think Best Buy might even carry it, which you can return it in store, obviously. I know they carry the G910. I'm not sure about the 410. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, I would probably give it like somewhere like a six and a half out of ten, simply because it does have that little bit too much of a gamery look for me. Um, the switches aren't the best thing ever. They're like I said, they're not bad for gaming. They're really bad for typing, in my opinion. Um, and then there's just like, kind of like some. I mean, any feature, I guess you could argue, isn't necessarily a useless feature, but it has, like, this arc stock where, it, like, you can control it from your phone and stuff, and it just kind of seems pointless to me. I would literally never use that in my entire life. Um, and I will say, I do like some of the improvements they made, though. Um, this keyboard does not have the hideous keycaps that the G910 had, which were, like, these grooved-out keycaps um, that were just absolutely awful. Um, it has really good, nice feeling keycaps. Uh, they're not PBT, I don't believe, but they actually feel a lot better than like ABS, um, which they might even be ABS, but they do have a nice feel to them for whatever reason. Uh, backlighting is really good, like I said. I think the switches are good for gaming, like I said. So that's another plus. Uh, minuses or cons is going to be the kind of weird shape to it. Uh, non-compatible MX Cherry Swim, so no custom stem rather, so no customization, and um, and yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. I will say, in my opinion, there are a lot more. I, I don't want to say better, but more comparable keyboards out there for like a lot less. Like you can get a Cooler Master Quick Fire Rapid Eye, which is considered to be like a really good keyboard for like ninety to a hundred dollars. Which I mean, that's like could be like a 40 to 50 to 60 dollar difference in this keyboard because I've really never seen this one on sale um, but yeah I know I didn't like actually show it all that much and more just talked about it um, I'm hoping like I said to get a um, my other webcam in soon and hopefully I can do something like a dual setup so where you can see the item I'm talking about a little bit more while I also review it and talk about it um, but yeah, as always guys, this is Billy. If you have any questions about it, I'm sure I'll use it a little bit longer at least. I might end up keeping it, who knows. Um, but I'm sure I'll use it a little bit longer, so be sure to comment, throw out any questions you have on it. Um, and yeah, always, uh, like I said, subscribe for more videos. I think, I, I think I'm actually going to get in a Razer Death Adder Chroma tomorrow, which should be pretty interesting for me, because I actually have pretty small hands. Um, so yeah, it should be interesting because it's kind of known as a very large mouse. And I'm also waiting for any announcements on the Scream 1 from Final Mouse. That's going to be the big next one that I want to review. Also, I have looked into a little bit on the Hori Edge 101, which is kind of like an optical sensei maybe from SteelSeries, but it's not from SteelSeries, it's from Hori. Um, but yeah, as always guys, it's been Spilly. Um, go ahead and subscribe if you like uh, like any of the content that I put out, and as always, uh, comment, have any questions, and take it easy.